What's up guys, it's your boy Falcon back again and today we're working on a 2001 F-150 and what we're going to be doing is replacing the front wheel bearing so if you need to do this on your vehicle, stay tuned. Alright, before we get started, we got to make sure that we have a jack and of course and a jack stand so we can make sure that we are safe, that we always put a jack stand when we lift up the truck. And of course, we're going to start out by removing the front wheels with a 21 millimeter socket, I believe. Something that's recommended whenever you remove your wheel is to put it under the frame just in case you jack, your jack stands fail. It has something to land on. Now here to remove the front calipers, it is a 18 millimeter bolt. And I'm using a swabble socket. As you can see here, the caliper is pretty open, so it's kind of stuck in there. So what I like to do is grab a pry bar and put it between the rotor itself right here, and then press towards the caliper. That will make the caliper pistons close up. Also have something to leave your caliper on so the line is not just completely stretched out. You can clearly hear and see the play inside this bearing about quarter of an inch to either side. We need to make sure that we clean off the cap really good and then we're going to use a flathead screwdriver to take off the little cap. It has a little lip so you just hit behind the lip and it will kind of start popping it out. You go all around it. And you should be able just to pull it off with your hand. After taking off the cap, you gotta make sure that you try to get as much grease out of there as you can. So use degreaser or brake cleaner. After that, we need to remove the safety pin. Needle nose pliers will work really good here. And then we remove the cap from the actual nut. Same thing, we need to make sure that we clean everything as much as possible. After that, we just gotta remove the actual nut itself. Sometimes you'll be able to just loosen it up with your hand. Sometimes you might need a wrench, but it shouldn't be that tight either way. After cleaning it up, you wanna make sure and inspect it for any damages or anything that the nut might have that you might need a new one. Next is gonna be the washer that's right behind it. Behind that is gonna be the bearing, but we're not gonna reuse it, so it really doesn't matter. But the washer, the flat washer, we wanna get it as clean as possible. The washer has two flat spots, you can see it right here. So it only goes one way, so it doesn't move. And you wanna look at the grooves. You see this groove right here on the back? That's the side that's gonna go towards the bearing, so we wanna keep it the same way. Here you want to inspect the spindle also, we want to make sure that we clean it off with the greaser or brake cleaner and we also want to clean off the actual ABS sensor itself. We want to make sure that we clean it down with the rag and the greaser, make sure it's completely clean so we can have fresh grease whenever we put it back. So after getting it as clean as possible, you want to inspect it to make sure that the bushing of the bearing is going to be able to seat properly. These groups that you see right here on the bottom is going to be okay on this particular vehicle because the bushing is going to sit on top of that. Now we proceed to remove the rear main seal from the wheel hub. And you can just use a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar. You remove that and you can get to the rear bearing. So now I'm just checking it to see if there was anything wrong with it or why it failed. Same thing inside the rotor itself. I'm trying to get it as clean as possible. Try to get all the grease out of there to make sure I can put new grease and it's going to look good. I'm also checking for the actual bushings that go inside there to check if I'm gonna need to replace them with a new bearing or if the old ones is gonna be okay. These are the new bearings and these are the bushings that I'm talking about but the ones that were left in there are really clean and good they're not scratched up so we can reuse those. 
So now to grease up the bearings. This is the high heat grease that I'm using, especially for bearings. We're gonna use a lot of grease. Don't be cheap on the grease, just use a lot of it. And most people wanna put grease on the bearings like this on the side and just kinda rub it in between, but that's not how you do it. You grab it on the side and you kinda force it in through the grooves and you can see the grease coming out through the grooves if you use this actual procedure. And then you can proceed just to rub it around with your hand. Get some more grease if you need to. And keep pressing it through the roofs. When you're done with it, it should look like this. Very, very messy. And making sure that you put grease through all the grooves. Then when you're done, you can just set the bearing where it goes. And then we're going to proceed to put the rear main seal on it. The rear main seal, this is it. And that is the part number for it. We're gonna set it down and then we're gonna grab something flat so we can heat it evenly. So in this case, I'm using a wooden board and then I just heat it with a hammer in the middle. Give it a couple of taps and it should have gone in evenly. So then I just go around it with a hammer or use a big socket so it can have more surface to cover. And then you just go around it. Just double check it and that is it. We're done with the rear bearing. Now to flip it around and do the front bearing. We have the same thing. We have the bushing. So now I'm just double checking that the old bushing is still good. Not scratched up or worn out. So it's good. So same thing. We're going to proceed to grease up the front bearing. Just how we did the rear one. Same thing. Put a lot of grease on your hand. And force the grease through the bottom and the top. If you use this procedure, you will see this grease going through the sides also. And once again, this is how it should look whenever you're done. Completely messy, completely full of grease. Every single group. Then we just kind of place it on the top and that is it. Now when we put the rotor back on, we want to hold the front bearing with our hand and try to make sure that it goes on evenly all the way. If you've done, the front bearing might fall, which is fine. You can just put it back. Once it sits on the back, you want to spin the rotor around a little bit. We're going to do a lot of spinning. Now we put the flat washer on the front. We look at the groove. So then we put the groove where it went towards the back. And then we put the nut. We tie it up by hand. And then again, we give it a couple of spins so we can kind of sit in place. It's a 27 millimeter bolt. First step in the torquing process is 12 foot pounds of torque. So we put, grab our torque wrench to 12 foot pounds of torque. And then we give it, there it goes, 12 foot pounds of torque for the first time. And then we turn it, give it a couple of spins. Second step is 30 foot pounds of torque. So then we set our torque wrench to 30 foot pounds of torque, tying it up. On the second pass with 30 foot pounds of torque, you're supposed to try to spin it and torque it as you go. And then again, we give it a couple of spins so everything can sit where it should or the bearings can sit. Last step is to loosen it up a quarter turn. So we put our wrench in a horizontal line and we go all the way around. That's half a turn. So we go straight up. That's a quarter turn and it should be done right there. We give it a couple more spins, check the nut, and then we put our nut cover on the top and then we're gonna put our nut pin that goes through the little groove with some needle nose pliers and we are pretty much done here. And just to show you guys the difference, if we try, it doesn't make any noise, it doesn't move, there is no play on the bearings at all. So now we just tap our cap back into place. We are done. Alright guys, so that is it. So now I'm just going to torque back the two bolts to remove the caliper at I believe it's 136 foot-pounds of torque. 
um, and that, and then just put everything back. But that is how you replace your front wheel bearings from, I believe, it's 96 all the way to 2003 F-150 Expeditions. Um, most of the newer cars don't have this kind of um, bearings anymore, so this is like rare, but there it goes. All right, guys, so I really hope you found this video helpful, and as always, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell for me, share the channel. I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching. You guys have yourselves a great day.